Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is The Idle Mind. And I am, of course, your host, the Report of the Week. You know, I, I turned on the camera and I essentially went into this spontaneously. Uh, there's a few things, of course, that I'll explain to begin with, and then we'll jump into things. Granted, and uh, from now on, perhaps I have to, you know, use a brief introduction of the sorts to begin with. You obviously notice the change in quality with the camera. And that should go without saying, of course, there has been a change. In this specific setting, given just simply how the lighting falls upon this room and objects therein, it just so happens that the HD cameras, two of which I, I own, uh, the one, of course, you always see me use mostly at the car, sometimes outdoors, too. It's a, it's a great camera, by the way, 1080p. Could you go up to uh, 4K, actually, but the files would be way too big to load there. Um, but you have the HD camera, you have that one. Then there's a smaller HD camera, a flip one. Um, you actually got to see that one in the CNN money piece. Um, that's it's okay it's uh you know 720p 60 frames per second well number one the 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 main hd camera that i've been using a lot lately th these videos tend to be a bit longer in terms of how they they are it'll be around probably 30 40 minutes in length and simply put filming at 1080p just creates number one a very very large file in size and it'll take uh, just given how my internet is it would take a long time to upload, and uh, it would just be a very, you know, be a massive file, and just a very long upload time. And also, and this is the same problem of the other camera, just given how the light falls in this room, for whatever reason, it almost makes me look blurry, in a sense. I don't know why that is. It, it, it always, it forever puzzles me, but that's just how it is. Yet this old camera here, tried and true, uh, I imagine if you've been with this channel since... 2014, 2015, 2013, you remember this camera very, very well, and uh, just in this room, in this setting, this camera has always done a magnificent job, it's always done such a fine job, and uh, that's the go-to camera here, even if it's not 1080p, uh, just given this setting, it picks up the audio well, and uh, given the lighting, it also uh, creates still maybe not a crystal clear HD image, but a pretty sharp image nonetheless. Now, we got that taken care of. Second, what is the idle mind exactly? Well, I bet a few of you do remember what that is, um, but I imagine a lot of viewers don't. Uh, they don't necessarily know what that may be. Perhaps we know, of course, what Running on Empty is. That's the food review series. We know what Energy Crisis is. That's the energy drink review series. We even know what VORW is. Of course, the audio only, perhaps you can call it a podcast, broadcast, YouTube video with no video, uh, whatever you wish to call it, where I discuss miscellaneous things. But what's the idle mind? I haven't really seen any of those. I know you uploaded a bunch of those in 2012, of which several are missing. And then you uploaded like one in 2013, and I, I think maybe one in 2014. That's it. I know some people have requested them. But, you know, nothing's ever came of that. What, what exactly is the idle mind? Well, it's my pleasure to explain. And the Idle Mind was a show I originally created in 2012. Ever since I had this channel, really, I've always... I didn't want it just to be a review channel. And that's essentially what it's turned into now, of course. It's, you know, mostly food reviews. You want to know what this burger tastes like, this piece of pizza, this... Uh, this thing I think is chicken, I don't know for sure, what it tastes like. That's essentially what I cover for the most part with this channel. It used to be an energy drink channel, now it moves mostly to food. But I still like utilizing either the camera equipment, audio equipment, and anything in between. I think that's pretty much the two that I have available. I don't know what there would be in between. But anything in between to talk about other things, not just food and how it tastes. You know, I like talking sometimes about shortwave radio, whatever comes to mind, really. I can talk about salt. I can talk about suits. I can talk about floor tiles. And 
I can talk about anything, and I, you know, it, it's actually, it's very fun to be able to step away from just talking about reviewing food and what something tastes like and be able to talk about something different for a change. And that was the main premise of the Idle Mind series. It was not only to inform and enrich, also to entertain at the same time. I know simply my means of being able to discuss topics other than, you know, food or drink. This was the avenue which I would put it down. You know, if I wanted to talk about anything on my mind, it would be, of course, on the idle mind. So this is simply a miscellaneous, you can say, lecture series that's been ongoing since 2012, with some breaks, of course. But that's what the idle mind really is. It's just a, a lecture series uh, of miscellaneous topics. And it, it, before VORW ever came about, this was my, my way to talk about whatever I wanted to talk about. It would be in the idle mind. Then VORW came along, and it's essentially what the idle mind would be, except with no video. However, as of late, uh, the, the VORW show, now it's not going anywhere. The VORW show is always going to be here, and it's going to be continuing. But the VORW show has just been a, a, a comedy of errors, really, to, to say, it, say it as the situation portrays it. It's been a comedy of errors. I record a whole VRW show, the recorder breaks, then I have to, you know, redo it. Then I have problems with the next recorder, figure something out, start making the next show, and then I find some statistics that really give a real blow to my morale. Then I get bombarded with spam messages, troll messages. I get people writing in, you know, that give you this long letter. I sit there reading it, and then at the end, it turns out it was just a troll message, and I've been getting tons and tons of those lately, and it's just really, it's been, with, without a, a shadow of a doubt, this last VRW show has been a very difficult one to record. Uh, it, it will get up, but admittedly, it's, it's much harder, given the circumstances, recording it than I expected it to be. Uh, you know, that's just... That's just how it is. But, nonetheless, I didn't want to give up. I just, I just didn't want to say, you know, that's that. We're just going to wait a couple more weeks until we do that. I wanted to give you all something else in the meantime. And I thought, well, I think this is a perfect time, a perfect opportunity, and a perfect situation to essentially resurrect the idle mind and use it as an avenue simply for miscellaneous talk. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now... Some of you may like the scenery, some of you may like the setting. I cannot guarantee either of those things forever. I cannot. Uh, I, as you, you well know, I, I travel around quite a bit, and with that, of course, the setting does change. However, one thing that I can guarantee you is the general premise of this program, which will not change, no matter where I am. But for now, as I am in this setting, I'm going to make good use of it, and I hope to get several idle minds out for you. Um, uh, your, your feedback, of course, is greatly appreciated, by the way. Comments, in the form of comments, that's the easiest. You can leave a comment, and I will view it and perhaps even respond to it. But if you have more personal feedback, of, you, of course, you can just message me via YouTube or email me, repweekinterview1 at gmail.com, or vorwinfo at gmail.com. This is the idle mind, and I do hope you enjoy it. With that being said, you know, this, this program, again, I decided to start it essentially spur of the moment. It's uh, 1.36 a.m. as I record this. And, you know, the idea to, to make this idle mind again really just came about to me a few hours ago, maybe four or five hours ago. I thought, well... I know this VORW show has been, you know, it's been delayed and delayed some more. And it's just been dragging on and on and on. And, I, I mean, I enjoy recording them too. Especially, I, you know, I enjoy just being able to lecture and talk about whatever, whatever comes into mind, whatever pops into mind. And I thought I don't want to keep the people waiting any longer. I just want to upload something, anything. And, you know, for my own enjoyment of being able to make it, and hopefully for your enjoyment too, of being able to watch it and digest it, and uh, and everything in between. I guess that's my new saying now, everything in between. But 
With that being said, this is simply essentially going to be VORW but on video, where I talk about, for the tenth time repeating, miscellaneous things. So I guess there's no real smooth transition into it. We'll just we'll just start right now. Uh, one thing that I've really been thinking about, and I think this is how I'm going to structure these idle minds, is at the beginning, I'm going to talk about just several miscellaneous points, perhaps, you know, some current events, some stuff about shortwave radio, some stuff about the channel. Then I'll get to the beef, you can say, you know, the beef of the program, the main content for about 15, 20 minutes, and then close it off with some smaller discussions as well. That'll be the program, perhaps averaging 30, again, to 40 minutes in length. So as there's no real smooth transition, let's just talk about some miscellaneous things. Uh, first and foremost, of course, the U.S. election. Now, I know I made my election video. I talked about it. I explained it. And I talked about, you know, the importance of voting, especially in local politics. And uh, I hope you voted. If you didn't vote, that's fine. Um, there's local elections, which are always uh, fairly common. And then, of course, in two years, there's the interim elections. And two years thereafter, of course, the 2020 presidential elections. And uh, I will admit, this I'd say the results of this election were quite a surprise, uh, especially some of the states that flipped. I, I'll, I'll be honest, I did not expect to see Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, or Michigan uh, to flip as they did. I mean, I, and perhaps that goes because I, I you know, I, I really paid attention to the polls a lot. I followed them a lot, you know, and. I realize now at this at this point in time, one thing I really have to take away from this election is the fact that low probability events most certainly could happen, and that even though a poll perhaps might give a ninety nine point eight percent chance of one event happening, the remaining point zero two percent does not equal zero. Now I have to you know that's something to that I personally am going to take away from it, that despite if someone has a 10, 15, 20% chance of winning something, that's not a 0% chance. And uh, that's definitely something that I'm going to be taking away from that, and never to underestimate low probability events, of course. I imagine many of us learned that from Brexit, of course, what happened there. Essentially, I also think of this as the American equivalent of Brexit, in terms of polling at least, where the polls tell you one thing, the actual results tell you something completely different. But very interesting, it was an interesting night, at least, uh, and it'll be interesting, I personally think, especially in four years in the 2020 election, we'll see how the polls exactly are with that, and we'll see if they've changed their methodology at all, or if, uh, who knows, right? Who knows? I realize you can't predict the future. No matter how talented a pollster you are, you just can't predict the future. It's it's impossible. There's always twists and turns and surprises that no one ever saw coming, uh, no matter what. And that's a uh, that's again a takeaway from this election. Uh, the VOA, actually, the Voice of America, that's the shortwave broadcaster from the United States. That's their official shortwave broadcaster. They had some special broadcasts going uh, for the U.S. election with election coverage. 16 frequencies, uh, and it was a good, a real good amount of coverage there. You know, to have 16 additional transmissions going from about a four-hour block from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. or so. And uh, they were mostly directed, though, to Asia and Africa. And as a result, they used different frequencies. I couldn't hear them too well here, but I was able to pick up one to uh, South Asia, of all places. I thought the broadcast to West Africa would make it in the best, but actually this one to South Asia came in pretty good. It was the Voice of America. And uh, a lot of interviews and election news coming in. And it was fun to listen to. You know, I was watching the different news networks, but I also had it on my, my shortwave radio that I was going to, and I thought that was that was fun to be able to hear these special little broadcasts and... and uh, and what have you, so I thought that was interesting, and it was also a fun way to monitor the results as well, of course. 
And, uh, you know, speaking of shortwave, things are, things are still going. Uh, things are still going all right. There's, uh, there's been some cuts still. I mean, we all know shortwave radio isn't, it isn't what it used to be, of course. It's a dying hobby, but it's not dead. You gotta remember that. It's not dead. There's still people listening, and there's still stations transmitting things to listen to. So as a result, there's no need to give up on the hobby, because there's still stuff out there to listen to. But some more broadcasters made some cuts. Unfortunately, uh, Deutsche Welle, the German international broadcaster, cut their English service uh, down from around three hours to just one hour. Now, so only in English for one hour a day. Um, and they moved it. It used to be from probably 12 to 3 a.m. Now it's just from... Uh, I believe 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., a different time, and, you know, they reduced it. I guess cut some some spending there, but one less thing to listen to on shortwave. And because it's in English from a major broadcaster, that usually impacts at least, you know, some European and North American listeners directly, um, because some people might say, well, you know, if... if if the broadcaster in Sri Lanka that was broadcasting in Hindi, you know, to India stopped broadcasting, why should I care? You know, I'm here in the U.S. The broadcast would never make it in in the first place. There's nothing I can take away from that broadcast. So, yeah, it went off the air. Why does that bother? Um, and still, it does bother because there's listeners, no matter what language it is or what area it's targeting, that will be impacted. Um, but especially a broadcaster in English targeting... Uh, yes, they are targeting Africa, but some of those broadcasts still propagate into Europe and North America. Uh, that still does have a direct impact, of course, to, to listeners there as well. So, that being said, of course, that's a little bit of a hit there. Vatican Radio is also... They're currently grappling, you can say, between shutting down their shortwave broadcasts entirely or staying on the air. Apparently, there's some changes in management, and that's... That's not going over too well, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. But that's all that's going on with shortwave for the most part. And uh, there you go, right there. Otherwise, with the channel, of course, you have uh, there. We have the uh, the usual some reviews coming in. Uh, I heard Little Caesars has a new pizza coming out. Actually, they're they're trying to play up on the stuffed crust. You know, they have their their. Uh, what is that? The deep, deep dish pizza, which I think that used to be my favorite pizza. Actually, my entire favorite pizza, especially from Little Caesars. I, I always used to really like that deep, deep dish pizza. You know, great pizza. I, you know, I thought it was it was a, a very nice pizza, very tasty. But more often than not, now I've I've had problems with it. Sometimes there's too much cheese, too much sauce. It's too undercooked, too overcooked even. So I've just noticed more and more problems with this deep, deep dish pizza from Little Caesars. Now, that doesn't mean I'm ever going to completely cut that out, but that does mean that, well, maybe I might, if I'm hungry for pizza, I might prefer trying a Pizza Hut than Little Caesars. However, there was a time when they decided, about a few months ago, you know, how about we get a stuffed crust pizza going, combine it with our deep, deep dish pizza, you know, how is that going to taste? Well, I tried it. I didn't particularly enjoy it. I guess enough people did, though, because now they're bringing it back. However, one thing they're changing is instead of just standard cheese only in the crust, they said, well, what can we do to make this stuffed crust pizza even better than it was the last time? Because people, I mean, they just loved the stuffed crust pizza so much. They wrote to us. And they said, this is the best thing I've ever eaten. This, I bet this one family, they probably wrote in. I mean, the way they acted with this stuffed crust pizza to actually bring it back, clearly it had to have been a success of some sort. Bet they had people writing in saying, you know, this stuffed crust pizza was just so delicious, you know. The other night I bought one of these stuffed crust pizzas and I actually got a knife and I cut the whole perimeter of the pizza where the cheese is. I dug it out, so I had this large string of cheese. And instead of eating it, I actually just, I draped it around my neck. I wore it like a set of pearls. And I just walked around town so proud 
with this string of cheese wrapped around my neck as a token of gratitude towards just how good Little Caesars is. So clearly, since it was such a success, commercially and socially, they brought it back. But they said it's not just coming back good, it's coming back better than ever. Yes, my friends. This cheese stuffed trust pizza from Little Caesars isn't just back as it is. It's going to be now the pepperoni stuffed crust pizza. Where they're actually going to have pepperoni on top of the pizza. It's going to be stuffed with cheese, the crust. But somehow they're going to actually put pepperoni in the crust as well, along with the cheese. It's just going to be a flavor explosion, folks. It's going to be, it's going to be something else. I can guarantee you that. I'm definitely going to try it uh, when I get my hands on it. Now, you know how it tastes. I have high hopes for this pizza, though. I know I criticized, and I kind of made fun of Little Caesars a little bit, but I know I criticized their other pizza um, for actually a bit of a lack of flavor in the crust, but really, I think this might be actually one of the best things to happen with their stuffed crust pizza. I really do. I think, you know, they have the cheese which is in the crust. It's a little bland to begin with. How about you add some spicy, salty, smoky pepperoni in there, not only do you get the flavor of the pepperoni itself, but while it's cooking, you're going to get some of the juice and oil from the cheese and the pepperoni. That might mix together in there, and you never know. It might actually make a very, very flavorful stuffed crust pizza. So I'm actually very eager to try this pizza from Little Caesars. Uh, I cannot guarantee you I'm going to get it the day it comes out. I actually, uh, given proximity, I can't. However, it's going to get taken care of, it's going to get reviewed, and I'm going to give my opinion of this pizza. So that's where it stands there. Uh, otherwise, Burger King's coming out with something new as well, but there's, it's a, it's a, a home-style cheeseburger, you know, it's essentially a burger without the fixings, and that's all that is. But that's going to get reviewed too, I don't, I don't really see too much difference there, but it's going to be, it's, it's worth trying, you know, it is. Well... Do you notice, uh, do you notice anything, anything, anything different in the setting here? Different camera. No, that's not it. You're using the chalice again. Well, I am, but that's not it either. That's it right there. You got that, uh, you got that little postcard or whatever that is on the wall. That's it, right? No, that is a QSL card from All India Radio, but that's not it either. I'm wearing a sweater. That's it. I'm wearing a sweater. And, uh, it's, it's, I know a lot of people are used to seeing me in a shirt and tie or uh, with a full suit. But I swapped my suit jacket for a sweater today. It's a cold, blustery fall day. I was quite cold myself. And I thought a sweater would be a good addition. And of course, I'm, I'm wearing a tie, a necktie, with my sweater here. You can see it's got a black and white pattern. I'm wearing a sweater. I haven't really worn a sweater in a long time on this, uh, on, not only on video here, but just in, in, you know, in person. I haven't worn a sweater in a very long time. I wore, I think, a sweater vest once, about a year ago. You can, if you really want to, you can check back. I think there was one where I was wearing a blue suit and a blue sweater, and I was wearing like a, like a sweater vest three-piece suit. I, I remember that. Yeah. But... I haven't just worn, you know, a full-blown... That was a sweater vest. I haven't really worn a full-blown V-neck or a crew-neck sweater for that. Or even like a a zip... Not, not a cardigan, but a zip sweater. You know, I haven't... I haven't worn one of those in a, a long time. I mean, wearing a sweater like this, that harks back to the days of 2014, early 2014, late 2013... What brings the change? Well, it's it's cold outside. A little chilly inside as well, but that's what brings the change. I got cold. 
I, I looked up there in my closet. I've got, I'd say, over a dozen sweaters. Actually, probably two dozen. I've got about eight or nine sweater vests. So that harks back to 2012. I was really big into sweater vests in 2012. Uh, there was a, a tradition I partook, or partaked, partook, partaken, in back in 2012 called Sweater Vest Tuesdays. And every Tuesday, I'd wear a sweater vest and tie down the row. As long as it was cool enough to wear a sweater vest, that's what I would do. And not all of them fit, you know, a couple of them are, are, are a bit tight nowadays. And that's, that's a good thing. I mean, if I stood the same exact body as I did in 2012, that would be... I mean, people would, would, would question if my, did I, did, did my growth just get stunted by something? Um, so that's a good thing, actually. One or two of them, I got a few sizes bigger, perhaps, back then. They still fit, you know, somewhat comfortably. And I still have all these sweater vests up there still. Um, and then later, back in late 2013, early 2014, uh, I got a bunch of actual, you know, crew neck, v-neck sweaters. And a lot of those still do, uh, still do fit pretty well. You know, I got them. They had a little bit of leeway either way, and uh, and that's good for for years ahead. So they still fit, because I really haven't grown at all in about two or three years. So now, essentially, the clothing that I have is what I'm still going to be wearing ten years from now until I have to buy new clothing if you know just age gets the best of it and it's unwearable anymore, i.e stains or tears or it just doesn't fit anymore um not due to any stylistic changes i don't really follow fashion that much um you know so that's where that stands but i have a few sweaters up there i had uh i've got a dark red one that still fits i've got a light blue one a dark blue one uh i think a a solid black sweater then a black argyle sweater light gray of course and uh there's a few more as well. I can't think of all of them off the top of my head. But I thought it would be a great day for a sweater. And that it was. And that brings us really to what I wanted to talk about. Now, this is not a factual piece, but rather an opinion piece in regards to climate. And some of the differences I've observed between climate, you know, say, in more northern areas where it's colder and in more southern areas where it's warmer. Because in the last year, I've been in both, so of course I can attest to some of the personal differences that I've experienced. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Idle Mind. I'm gonna stop the camera right now just to make sure I have enough room, and we'll get back to you very soon. Thank you, and I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Comments are, of course, welcome. <laughs> All right, and we are back. Back we are. I don't really like editing the videos at all, just to splice two clips together. So that's why I always leave in when I walk to and from the camera. I just do. That's that's on. I've never been a fan of all the jump cuts, you know, that you see on YouTube. You know, I'm, I'm just not a fan of it. That's that's my two cents. Granted, the people that often do those jump cuts they have very big 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 channels and they're very talented people they know what they're doing you know they they sure do that's just their way of making videos that's just their particular style and i, I give them credit for that but that's just not how i um just not how i enjoy making my videos so i just try to do it in one continuous take or you know if it's too long for the camera really i'll just give a little you know shut the camera off Transfer the file. That's what I did when I shut the camera off. I transferred the file because this camera can hold up to uh, 60 minutes of footage and it's only got about 30 minutes left. So I was 27 minutes talking. I just estimated it was probably going to be close to filling up. So I stopped filming. I took the camera, put it over to the computer, and, uh, and now I have that saved, then deleted it off the camera, and now we're filming again for the final portion. So climate. Now, I mentioned it's an opinion piece, but this is just really a, me stating what my general thoughts are on the more colder climates, say in New York, are, in my opinion, how I view them in comparison to more warmer climates yearly in more southern places, such as Florida. 
Well, I'll begin it by saying I think each place has its benefits and its drawbacks. Uh, I think you can actually take, t take it either way. I think you can say one of the benefits of a more northerly climate, New York, is variety. You get a little bit of everything. For a few weeks in the summer, you get days in the 90s and even hundreds. Where you'll just be absolutely dying if you're wearing a sweater. So you have days where it's just extremely warm. You can wear as little clothing as you want. You can go to the beach. You can go swimming about. You can stay outside all night and not find yourself freezing to death. And you'll have these extremely warm days. Yet just a few months later, you'll have days where you're going to be wearing a sweater and an overcoat and a big winter jacket and fuzzy little boots when you go outside. And you're sure not going to really want to spend too much time outside at night unless you absolutely have to. And everything that falls in between those two extremes. You'll have days where it's 50 degrees outside and just a beautiful foggy rain all day. And you're going to have other days where it's 65 degrees and sunny. You get a little bit of everything. You get to see the snow fall. I'm not going to try. I'm trying, I'm trying not to be too biased towards the snow. You'll get to see the snow fall. You'll get to see how pretty all the trees look. You'll be able to step outside and enjoy that serene silence that some of you, if you've been in snowstorms before, you get to go outside and just get that silence that's outside. No one else is out there. The snow is just like a fine, white, undisturbed blanket. No footprints yet. Sometimes not even any tire tracks yet. Distant, distant sounds. Everything is just so quiet and peaceful. And then the next day comes, and then you gotta shovel it. And then you're out there cursing the weather. And you slip on the fall on the snow, you slip and fall on it. Then a couple of weeks later, it's just this filthy-looking, slushy mess, ruins your shoes, ruins your car. I hate snow. But no matter how you look at it, you get the snow, you get the rain, you get ice. Ice is that's a bad one, um, and everything in between, really. So, of course, one of the things a lot of people like about climates in New York is the variety. Hot and cold, you get a little bit of both, not too much of either, some may say. And some people say, I like that. Keeps things different, you know? You get some days where it's warm, some days where it's cold, and it's ever-changing. You don't get that monotony that you may get in some other places. Well, one of the things people actually find themselves liking in warmer climates such as Florida, is the monotony. I think it really comes down to personal taste, if you ask me. But a lot of people say, eh, I'm not a fan of the cold, you know? I'm really not a fan of the cold. Yes, you know, you can put on more layers, you can put on more layers, but granted, a 17 degree day, if you're out there long enough, you will get hypothermia, and if you are exposed long enough, you will die as well. A 100 degree day, 105 degree day, more likely than not, down in Florida, there's air conditioning in every car, and every building that has a roof on it. So what, I can just wear shorts and a t-shirt? I just go air conditioning to air conditioning. And when the sun goes down and when it's night, then I can go out and take a walk, go to the park, look at all the little frogs hopping around. And that's just in the summertime. In the winter, at its absolute coldest, it may only get down to the upper 40s in, uh, for just a few days. But more often than not, it's still in the 70s each and every day. Why would I want to go up there and have to deal with snow, have to shovel it? Risk slipping and falling every time I go outside when it's winter. These horrible, horrible, extremely cold temperatures. Why would I want to do with that? So a lot of people to begin with, 
see really these two polar opposites continual change versus monotony already people are split 50 50. there is no everyone likes this and everyone likes that there's none of that when it comes to climate you have people that like the monotony of warmer weather and you have people that like the change of varying seasons i myself of course i've i've you know i've really been a a new yorker for a, a very long time that's really what i've always known this change in seasons you know it's warm for a little bit getting cooler for a little bit oh boy freezing cold for a little bit getting warmer for a little bit warm for a little bit ever repeating that's what i've always known so that's what i've always just accepted you know oftentimes when you're subject to a single environment for your entire life chances are you may not really know if something is actually better. You might have heard about it, but when you actually haven't experienced it, you may not know yourself whether, man, maybe I actually like this better. Well, maybe I really hate that. You can make assumptions, but until you actually experience it, who is really to say uh, regarding some things? That goes for, for climate. I've always been content with the differing seasons. However, as of late, I've taken a liking to warmer climates. I have, admittedly. Uh, you know, I have. And sure enough, when it does get cold, I think, well, <laughs> when is it going to get warm again? That's, that's how I see it now. And when I think about snow, something that many people associate with the beautiful picturesque scenes of wintertime, I like to think, you know, it's fun to look at when it's falling. It is. It's fun. But as soon as it stops falling, and it's time to go out there to clean it up, it becomes really one of your worst nightmares. Snow, I think, is one of those things that's enjoyable for a couple hours when you look at it. And that's it just abruptly ends right after that, when you're stuck dealing with it, then having to walk through it. On the sidewalks, either A, still have this slushy mess, or B, they're not even shoveled out to begin with, and you got to walk on the road and hope that that person isn't too busy texting on their phone, and they'll see you, and they don't hit you and kill you. Just so many variables, so many worries, that really, I, I don't like the snow either. It can be an absolutely beautiful, beautiful thing while it's coming down, and makes for great pictures. Very peaceful when you're watching it falling, but that's where all the fun ends right there. So... I myself have taken a liking to warmer climates. Now, I think that variability and that change, of course, in seasons is a nice thing. And even some warmer climates have that to a much more suppressed degree. Um, but I still think it can be fun. But really, when it comes down to my personal preference, I tend to prefer nowadays warmer climates over colder climates. Um, and that's just my personal opinion. And another thing, I think, with colder climates and also the changing of the seasons, well, that variability and that continual change is oftentimes seen by many as something that ushers in something different, and some people like it. Another thing that may come with winter that does pose its own problems is something, of course, known as a seasonal affective disorder, um, which, in short, as we mostly know, is periods of depression, which are sometimes triggered by changing seasons, especially uh, the beginning of winter and, and, you know, with that. Of course, we really don't see that too much in warmer climates. Now, that still exists. It absolutely, absolutely does. But it's mostly when it comes down to winter. And I can attest to it. Um, I'd say either A... I've experienced it, or B, it just so happens that all the, all the bad things that get me down happen to occur, you know, between November and February, every time, you know, every time I think back to that, it's always been between November and February, that's when it's, when I've always been, you know, been feeling, feeling bad the most, and uh, I think there is a definite correlation there. Perhaps it deals with, you know, the the changing of also in terms of daylight, lack of light, um, and also just how everything when you look outside 
may tend to just look exanimate, lifeless. You know, the trees, they don't die, but they hibernate. All their leaves shed, just these bare skeletons, essentially. You get just this frozen wasteland. Eventually, all the nice green grass is gone, you know. Maybe that's also a factor right there. In the end, I think, in terms of climate, there are extremes on both ends. You get the extreme cold, of course, which I've gone on a, a rant, pretty much. You also get the extreme heat. And, as I've mentioned, there are countermeasures to that, of course, in the form of air conditioning. And, personally, when I think of warmer climates, one of the things that I really do like about warmer climates, really, to, to say, is also precipitation. In colder climates, especially during the winter, snow falls water break. Snow falls. And you heard my thoughts about snow. Well, in warmer climates, you don't get any of that. What happens when it rains? The rain falls. The rain goes into the storm drains. The rain evaporates. Two hours later, you can't even tell that it rained. Perhaps at times it may rain more frequently, and that's a given. Uh, anyone who's lived in Florida knows, especially during the, the summer season. There's your daily afternoon thunderstorm. Sometimes your nightly thunderstorm as well. Always, every day, you get that. However, it's quick to, to conclude. And the byproduct, the water that's fallen, is gone within a few hours. Could you imagine? And you, that does this does happen, of course, in the form of lake effect snow in more northern climates. One thing, again, I, I hate about snow is that it doesn't get rid of itself easily. As long as it stays below 32 degrees, chances are that snow is just going to sit there and sit there and accumulate more and more and more for months. Snow is just going to be there. It's not going anywhere. So, another problem I have with more northern climates, in my book, is the fact that the precipitation just stays there, and once it's there... It's usually going to be there for a while. And even if, well, let's say you got a snowstorm, it's a freak storm, right? Happens in mid-November, right now. Happens in mid-November here. Eight inches of snow. Piles up. Looks like a winter wonderland outside. Next day, it's a, a shocking, you know, balmy 55 degrees. Only gets down to 39 at night, still above freezing. The day after that gets up to 60. And then the day after it gets down to maybe 40, 42 degrees. Still above freezing the entire time. The snow is going to melt. But, despite the fact that the temperature is above freezing, the snow's not going to just go, it's gone, look. It, it just it just turned 33 degrees, the snow's gone. It's, it's, it, it just disappeared like that. No, it's going to take at least a good week or two of above freezing days to melt the snow. So snow is... It just takes a very long time to get rid of itself, to disappear. That's another problem that I have with snow. It's a very pretty sight, but does it last? And that's a problem that I have with it. In the end, though, I have a personal preference to more warmer climates. I think it's down to the individual to choose what is right for them. If you happen to like a more warmer climate, where you'll get consistently more warmer days, no frozen precipitation, that's your call. If you like a more northern climate, where you're going to get a mix of everything, and then if you want an extreme northern climate where it's just cold every day, if you really want to subject yourself to that, be my guest, go for it as well. I think really it comes down to the person. That's why I treated this as an opinion piece, just myself sharing my opinion on climate. Uh, in terms of comfort level, and uh, again, I think it's really, in the end, up to you. What you think is best for your given situation and what you want in terms of your area that you live in. That being said, I think this concludes this Idle Mind, and uh, your comments, of course, are greatly appreciated. I want to know what you thought of this format, if you want to see more of it, less of it. And I will say, and I'm going to mention this in a comment, because I know not everyone's going to get to this part, but an idle mind really isn't an idle mind. 
without the idle mind catch. I think that's a little bit of a hint of where I'm going to be filming the next idle mind. Uh, should there shouldn't be an extreme negative response, you know, against this one. I mean, I understand some criticism is fine, but if I get you know hundreds of people telling me this is the worst thing they've ever seen, I'll respect their comments and I won't, you know, I won't subject them to this. Um, so I think comments and feedback are greatly appreciated. Comment section, of course, where they can be left. But again, if you want to leave more personal comments, uh, you can do so YouTube message system or email repweekinterview1 at gmail.com or vorwinfo at gmail.com. Thank you. I hope you have a great day, great evening, whenever you're watching this. And uh, I hope to get another idle mind up for you soon, as well as some reviews, of course. Those have not been forgotten. Those are coming up as well. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. And take care. I'm your host for the Report of the Week. And once more, thank you. That's all.